What up, people? Mr. Noland back. We're going to be going over homework 6.1c. We're talking about finding the part, the whole, or the percent. My fifth period class right now is being very gracious enough to let me go over the homework with them. So let's go ahead and start with number one. Penguins spend about 75% of their lives in the sea. An emperor penguin in the wild has a lifespan of about 18 years. About how many years does the penguin spend in the sea than on land? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my nice little percent bar. Remember, the, the percent bar has four things that will never change. Your starting spot, which would be zero. Your finish line, which is 100%. And your hole. That will never change. Okay, it gives me some key information. First of all, it tells me the penguin lives to be about 18 years old. Which means, think about it, if you're 18 years old and you die, oof, that's pretty young. Okay, but for a penguin, that's a very long life. So this 18 represents the whole. It's how many years a penguin lives. It gives me some other key information. It says the penguin spends 75% of their lives in the sea. So it gives me this percent. So I want you to think about this. To go from 0 to 75 percent, that's how long the penguin lives in the sea. The other 25 percent is how many years the penguin lives on land. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have to solve for the part. We're solving for this piece right here. Now, if you notice, to go from 18 to 100, this is not a good scale factor. To go from 75 to 100, this is also not a good scale factor. But if you notice, these two numbers are diagonally across from one another. This means we can cross multiply. This will be the only time we are multiplying when we're talking about our percent bars. So we have to turn 75% into a decimal. So 75% as a decimal is 0.75. And let's multiply that by 18. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 4 is 60. Second row add a 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 7 is 7. Add straight down. But remember, I have to move my decimal back two places. So your part is 13.5. Some of y'all are like, yes, we're done. No, we're not, because we have to read the question. The question says about how many years does the penguin spend in the sea compared to the land? Well, we just figured out that the penguin lives in the sea for about 13.5 years. So we need to figure out how long it's in the, on land for. So what you do is you take your 18 years, how long the penguin lives, and you subtract it for how many years it lives in sea. You do the math and you get 4.5. Again, some are like, yes, we're done. Once again, no, we're not. How many more years does the penguin live in the sea than on land? Well, here's the sea. Subtract it from the land. So 13.5 minus 4.5. The penguin lives in the sea about nine more years than it does on land. That would be your final answer is nine. Well, sorry, nine years. I should label that. That was a lot of work. You will not have a question like that on the test. This is just a nice little higher ordered thinking question. I'm going to do number two with you as well because it is similar to number one. In Nathan's baseball card collection, 58% of the cards are players from the National League, 
he has 702 baseball cards. About how many more baseball cards are from players from the National League than from the American League? Again, start with your percent bar. Start by labeling your percent bar. Okay. It tells me he has a total of 702 baseball cards. That's my whole. That's how many he has. Well, it gives me a percent, 58 percent. On my percent bar, that's about slightly more than halfway. Now, this 58% represents how many National League player cards he has. So, this is my National. This part over here would be the American League. Well, this looks just like number one. Look at how these two numbers are diagonally across from one another. So we need to cross multiply. So 702 times what is 58% as a decimal? 0.58. So let's multiply. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 8 times 7 is 56. Second row add a 0. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 5 times 7 is 35. Add straight down. Move your decimal back two places. Notice how you get 407.16. That doesn't make any sense because you can't have .16 of a baseball card. That's like the dog eating most of it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to round that to my nearest whole number. Since this number is less than 50, we're going to round down to 407. So my part right here, which you just solved for, the part is 407. This part represents how many National League cards I have. But I also need to know how many American League cards I have. So you take the total amount of cards, which is 702 and you subtract it from how many National League cards you have, which is the 407. When you subtract those two numbers, you get 295 American League cards. Okay. So I'm going to write this one more time. Here's my National. Here's my American. But once again, we're not done. We have one more step. It wants to know how many more baseball cards are from the National League than the American League. Subtract those two. So after you subtract them, that's a 2. That becomes a 10. You get 112 more. National League cards. Again, that was a lot of work to f get your final answer. A question like this will not be on your test. It will not. Again, this was just a higher ordered thinking question. Now, some of y'all are looking at this and saying, this is for pre-AP, Mr. Noland. Well, if you're in regulars class, questions one through six are exactly the same. My pre-AP classes or the pre-AP classes have questions seven, eight, and nine still to do. The last one I'm going to do on this paper is number five. I'm going to do this one because it relates to the real world. It will not be on your test because we haven't taught you all that. Number five says, Carmen is going to buy a pair of sneakers that cost $63. The sales tax rate is 7.5%. What is the total cost of the sneakers to the nearest cent? Uh, see, what students don't realize is that you pay taxes when you become an adult. There is a state tax on almost everything that you buy. Okay, uh, The state tax in Texas is 
8.125%. So 7.5% is actually really cheap. Okay. All right, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your total cost, and you're going to multiply it by the sales tax. Notice how this says 7.5%. You have to turn the percent into a decimal. That does not mean cover up the percent sign and say 7.5 because there's a decimal in there. That means you take the decimal and move it two places to the left. So you're going to multiply it by 0 0.075. So let's do that multiplying. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 is 31. Second row out is 0. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 2 is 44. Add straight down. Move your decimal back two places. Nope, not two places. One, two, three places. Move it back three places. So notice you get 4.725. That's how much money you're going to pay in taxes. So the final step to do is to take how much the sneakers cost, which was your $63, and you have to add your tax to it. Notice we get sixty-seven dollars and seven hundred and twenty-five thousandths. I've never seen a cash register with point seven two five as their money. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to round to the nearest cent, like it tells us right here in the instructions. This five is gonna round the two up to a three. So your final answer should be sixty-seven dollars and seventy-three cents. That is how much these sneakers are going to cost. All right, guys. Um, if you can, flip to the back side. For regulars and pre-AP, on number six, you need to round up to the next whole number. You are talking about people. You can't have part of a person. That's a clue. Your answer is going to be a decimal. Round it to the nearest whole number. I am not going to show you how to do that one. That one's all on you. If you're in regulars, you may turn off this video. Pre-AP, a little extra. Pre-AP number seven is a very challenging question. You get zero clues. Number eight. I'm going to have you work backwards. Your clues are, well, your clue is you're going to have to have two different percent bars. You're going to figure out a solution for the percent bar, and you're going to have to use that on the second percent bar. The answer you're going to get is 119. That's your final answer. How did I get it? It seemed like Scooby-Doo followed the clues and solved the mystery. And finally, number nine. Another clue. Two different percent bars, just like on number eight. You will use your answer from the first percent bar on the second percent bar. Your answer will be a decimal. But guess what? You're talking about people. You can't have part of a people. Round your answer to the nearest whole number. Again, this is the answer, 236. How did I get it? Your job is to work backwards. All right, guys, I hope this video helps. Have a great day, guys. Bye.